Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. Um, I'm going to talk about how to revolutionize your store and drive a great retail experience. But before I get to the revolutionary part, let's have a quick pause and think about what's happening in the retail and what's happening in our life today. Is this what we expected uh, back in 2000? Of course not. Who would have imagined that we would be working from home? We'll be standing a meter or two meter apart. We'll be wearing masks all the time. And this will go on for days, weeks, and months, and in fact, years. Who would have thought that all the borders would be closed and our, our, our not only travel, but our interstate and in-city movement will be restricted as well? And who would have thought that this would cause a great labor shortage and would start to put a huge economic pressure on consumers as people, on retailers, and on governments as well? However, you know, behind all these um, symptoms of COVID pandemic, there are some very interesting themes that are appearing as well. And many of those are positive themes, actually. And I'd like to focus on the positive side today. So if I quickly move to my next slide, and if we think about what's happening in retail, then we see some very clear themes emerging. Now, of course, there are many themes emerging, but I'm going to pick five that I believe are quite profound. The first one is the blending of channels. Now, this was happening before pandemic that Consumers were choosing to order online and pick up in the store or come to store, have a touch and feel and go home and buy online. But pandemic has further accelerated this, uh, this behavior. And what it means is that as retailers, we need to think about how we accelerate our investment in our digital channels. How do we, how do we think about the customer journey? Which leads to my second theme, that as we put more and more emphasis on health and safety, driven by pandemic to some extent, but also driven by consumer choice, we need to start to think about how we create a better journey for consumers that matches the lifestyle of today's consumer. And that also means that we need to start to think about a low touch experience. It means that there is a bigger preference and uh, prioritization placed on self-service. And it also means that we need to drive more electronic transaction and less and less of use of cash because that's where the consumers are going. The third theme is about the role of store, and particularly a physical store. What we see is that as the, uh, driven by pandemic, but also do, driven by the consumer preferences, as we start to think about um, the, the role of store, how people come and, and what they do in the store. In addition to that, stores are increasingly becoming a fulfillment hubs, driven by the first and the second uh, theme that I talked about. And if stores are becoming more of a fulfillment hubs, you want your store um, staff to focus on many other things and not just focus on the checkout. So the less time they spend on checkout, the more time they can spend on serving consumers, helping them choose the right product and also meeting their fulfillment demand. The fourth trend is, is perhaps driven more by the pandemic, although some of the traces were already seen before pandemic as well. But certainly the pandemic has created a lot more economical challenges for, for a lot of retailers. And as a result, some have struggled to survive. And those who survived had to barely survive and are still struggling. But many have adapted to this new change and, and, and are doing okay. And lastly, some are taking a leap, taking full advantage of the change in consumer behavior change in business model and trying to rethink their whole business in a very different way and trying to differentiate themselves from other competitors. 
And that leads to the last one, which is about changing the business model and pivoting. And a Nike is a classic case where retailers like Nike used to have 30,000 partners for distribution. They've decided to change the entire business model, reduce that down to 40, from 30,000 to 40 partners, and they're calling them strategic partners. They changed the whole store concept. They made their store a more of an experiential place where consumers come and connect with Nike and their product and get the best product and they can even customize those products. And as of last year, towards the end of last year, Nike's stock hit the all-time high as a result of the change strategy and the growth that they've seen in their business. So some retailers are really taking full advantage of the, of the situation and, and completely pivoting their, in their business model and the way they deal with the consumer. So there are some silver lining here. There are some really positive news here. I think that a lot of these trends lead to some positive experiences and, 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 and an opportunity for growth in future. What it means from an IT perspective, that a lot of those retail themes translate into retailers and especially the CIOs and CTOs to think about their IT strategy. And again, a similar kind of themes appear from an IT point of view. They are, some of them are overlapping and some of them are a little bit more profound. And I'd like to focus on the five that I think are very profound sort of uh, priorities for uh, CTOs and CIOs. The first one is of course, is a shift to digital channel. We talked about the, the importance of omni-channel we talked about how e-commerce is, is growing as a result of people sort of sitting at home, working from home and ordering things online more and more. But also the lines between what used to be e-commerce and what physical commerce are also blurring. And the whole only channel is becoming more of a universal commerce space where you might be in a store and shopping online because you're paying on your mobile device. You might be at home and picking up in the store. So the lines between what used to be online and offline are blurring. And therefore, from an IT perspective, an IT manager needs to think about what should be the, the platform that would enable them to create all of these journeys, plus new, a lot more journeys in future for the consumers. And that means that they need to think about the architecture of the platform, especially the software platform. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in the, in the next few slides. They need to think about what do they do for their physical channels? What do they do for their digital channels? How do they create this endless aisle kind of experience for consumers? How do they create seamless journeys across all their channels? How do they create and, and add new journeys and new channels and new touch points for the consumers in future? And all of that needs to happen fast and at a, in an economical manner. So, so there is a need to rethink the entire architecture in a store, whether that's a physical store or an online store or both. The second theme is about the low touch economy. We talked about the need for self-service and, uh, and social distancing. It creates a need to be thinking about the consumer experience in store, and this is particularly important when, when consumers are in your store. Consumers are preferring to be more low touch. They want friction-free experience, and therefore the checkout experience and the, the selection of product, ordering of product, and payment of product, including checkout, all of that needs to be frictionless, low touch, and potentially cashless. The third one is on demand. And on demand consumption means that consumers are looking for what they want at any time, anywhere, and in any way. And that means that when they come to store, they want a quick service. They want to be able to find the product quickly. They want to be able to order it quickly, they want to make sure that it's available all the time, and they want to make sure that they pay for it quickly. And that means that not only the store configuration needs to change and the fulfillment model needs to change, but the, 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 the role of the store staff also needs to change. 
The staff needs to focus on the end-to-end -end journey, not just the checkout alone. And therefore, we need to think about how do we create a much more efficient experience for our store staff so they can serve the consumers better. Where can we save some time and where can we redeploy our people to create a better experience for our consumer so we can meet their demands? The fourth one is declining use of cash. I, I've mentioned that a couple of times, but, but this is a very profound uh, theme that's emerging. And it's been going on for quite some time. There has been a move from cash, uh, cash to electronic means of payment, uh, initially driven by cards and more recently driven by contactless and QR code type of payment channels, uh, payment methods. But what it means from a, from a retailer priority perspective, they need to think about how do I create a platform that allows us to create to offer all sorts of new payment methods in a very quick and, and, and speedy way. The challenge in today's environment is that, that, that every time a new payment method comes around, it takes months and months of uh, IT effort, and it takes millions of dollars in terms of the, the development cost. How do we cut down that cost and how do we cut down that time so we can create a faster speed to market? That requires a complete rethink of your payment strategy. And that requires a very flexible payment platform that allows retailers to move fast in the market because you never know what's around the corner. And this change in the payment industry is not going to stop anyway. It's, it's one of the most dynamic industry. We will create, uh, the FinTech industry will continue to create new opportunities and new ideas and will create lots of new payment methods. And we need, we as retailers will have to support all of those payment methods. So a, a, a focus on payment strategy is critical in my opinion. And lastly, consumers are becoming more and more value led. And one of the values that they're putting a lot of premium on is the ethical and sustainable consumption of goods and services. What it means is the consumers like to transact with, with retailers who have similar values, who are, who have ethical business models, who believe in sustainable end-to-end -end supply chain, and not only supply chain, but their entire ecosystem is sustainable. And therefore, retailers need to think about what that means for them and what that means for the retailer is that they need to partner with people who also have a similar value. So the entire chain and the entire ecosystem believes in those values and not only believes in those values, but practices those values. So let's just talk about these five things in a little bit more detail. And the first one is the shift to digital. Again, I mentioned that requires us to rethink about our software strategy. How do we invest in software? How do we create a platform that allows us to create all sorts of new consumer journeys and allows us to offer a seamless experience across all channels to our consumers. And the way we like to think about it is that it really starts by thinking about what sort of experience you want to offer to your consumer, how that consume experience breaks down into various journeys and personas. So for example, Joanna might want to start the journey at home when she's about to get in the car, dropping her kids to school, and on the way want to pick up a coffee and a muffin on the way at the convenience store at a petrol station. Ben would want to offer, would like to shop for a present for his wife while he's in the office and want to pick up in the store on the way home. Vipin, that's me, may want to go and shop for a shirt, but I want to touch and feel the shirt first before I buy it. And by the way, I also have to make sure that the color is right, so I have to check with my wife before I buy it. Now, I may want to come home and check with my wife first that yes, is this the right color? Or I can send her a picture on my mobile phone and get her permission before I buy that. And by the way, while I'm doing this, I might as pay, I might as well pay on my mobile phone. So while I'm sitting in the store, I'm doing an e-commerce transaction while I'm in the store. So we need to think about all of those scenarios which we call consumer journeys, and then include some of the staff journeys that are required to support such consumer journeys and create and analyze each of those journeys in a simulated form to make sure that whatever we think for future can support all of such journeys for consumers and for our staff. 
And that leads to a very open retailing environment. And this is where the board needs to have very strongly believe that the, the platform, a store platform of the future needs to be open. It needs to be collaborative and it needs to support the entire ecosystem. And that ecosystem may have lots of other players and we need to integrate with all sorts of other third party solutions and systems in a seamless manner. And it should allow us to continue to improve upon the customer experience by creating new experiences, adding new features and new functions. This is a store of a typical retailer. And you have lots of backend systems, your ERP systems, your order management systems, your inventory management systems, CRM systems, your financial systems, lots of other legacy systems. And in the front end, you have a lot of touch points your checkouts, your online shop, mobile channel, your social media channels. And then you have all sorts of new payment methods that are coming in that you have to support. All sorts of mobile wallets, cards, social payment methods. And who knows what else, what else is around the corner? What happens today is that every time you introduce a new feature, new function, new payment method, you're adding an additional layer into what is already a very messy spaghetti. It's a very complex interface because it started in legacy system. You're just adding on more and more layers and creating more and more complexity. And if you're present in multiple country, this, this complexity gets multiplied by that many times. So this is not the right architecture going forward because it, it limits your speed. It limits your ability to offer new experiences to the consumer. And it's a very, very expensive way of building new capabilities in your system. What we recommend is a seamless middle layer. Now, you may call it as a middleware. You can call, some people call it a pause solution. Some call it an extension of a backend system. We like to call it a Wynamic retail service. Of course, Wynamic is our brand name. This is our middleware retail service that has some of the common functions already built in, including basket management, consumer interfaces, price management, product management, and the transaction engine. But we have encapsulated all of this with a public API approach, so it's very open. Anyone, any device, any solution, any application can call any of these functions. And you can easily interface into the backend systems as well through API um, platform. And then in order for us to be more flexible in future, we put all of that into our cloud and we call it as our next gen retailing platform. Now it has all the functions of what a retailer needs in the middleware, as well as in a POS system. But the, by virtue of it being a cloud solution, and by the way, you can create all sorts of hybrid variations. If your network capability is not 100% then you may want to create a hybrid model where you have most of your applications in cloud and you also have a local hosting option when the network is down. But the fact that it's a cloud-based, essentially a cloud-native platform, it also means that you can start to reduce your investment in the front-end infrastructure and create more thin client infrastructure because most of the intelligence is now moving into the cloud. So you don't need heavy hardware to deal with the front end applications. So that reduces cost in infrastructure going forward. It gives faster speed because your, most of your services are running as microservices. They are plug and play services. You can add more capabilities as you wish. You can remove things that are no longer required and you can scale it up as long as, as much as you like across all your markets, all your different configurations. Let's talk about the second key priority, which we believe is, the, is to support the low touch economy, which requires a need for a low touch self-service environment. And that leads to a self-checkout, self-service environment. Of course, at Debo Nixdorf, this is our, one of our main product line. We've been in this business for 20, 30 years. We are one of the pioneers in creating self-checkouts. But our next generation of self-checkout are even much more flexible than ever before. 
We build, we build them to be more modular. So you can have all sorts of different configuration for different store type. You can have a different top and a different bottom. You can have cash or without cash. They are more available because they are, they are all remotely monitored and maintained. So we can preemptively maintain these machines. So the downtime is less and availability is 99.8, 99.9%. And they are more open because we understand that the ecosystem needs to be, needs to have an open architecture. Our self-checkout machine needs to connect with all sorts of third-party POS solutions and other value-added solutions such as loyalty. So it needs to be open. So, so that keeping those key values in mind, we've created the next generation of our self-checkout options. And of course, we'd love to talk to you in more detail if you have any interest in this area. The third item is on-demand consumption, which requires us to think about the role of store and the role of store staff. Now for us to create a more efficient experience for our store staff so they can serve the consumer better, we need to have a, a assistant uh, model for, for our store staff in each of the scenarios. If they're serving the consumers in a physical uh, checkout or attended checkout, we need to give options that they can ask for assistance very quickly. If they are serving consumers online or the service consumers from, from the back office, they need to have a way to sort of call uh, um, a help desk so they can resolve all sorts of technology issue or operational issues. And of course, we also need to sort of enable them with, with the new mobile devices and, and wearable sort of devices so they can do all their job in a much more efficient manner, such as inventory management, stock takes, dealing with consumer issues, dealing with technology issues, logging in, logging out, and all of those things. The fourth area is about the declining use of cash. And this is my favorite area, of course, because I have spent so much time in the payment industry. What it really means is that if you think about today's challenge in a retail environment, we have proprietary applications running on proprietary payment terminals given by the acquiring banks in most cases. And as a result, we have so many different layers of payment transaction routes or different type of payments. And if you have your, oper of your operation in multiple countries, then in every country, the payment architecture seems to be different because it's driven by the local payment system, the local acquirers, and therefore you're creating that many variations of payment application and the payment hardware in the front end. In the back end, of course, you know, as you have more payment types, typically it also means you have a more number of relationships in, with your acquirers and acquiring banks. And if again, if you have your operations in across multiple countries, then that number of acquirers increase dramatically and your, your overall volume gets very fragmented across a lot of these payment uh, routes. The third, channel, the third challenge is that every time you want to add a new payment type, because of the complexity in the payment system, again, it takes a long time, it costs a lot, and the speed to market is restricted. So keeping all those things in mind, what we've done is we've created a, a centralized payment platform. Again, it's a cloud-based platform. We call it a DNAV Motion. And this platform allows retailers to standardize a payment application and a payment device in the front end across all their stores, all their channels, and across all countries. And in the back end, it allows a dynamic switching capability so you can switch your transaction to any acquirer without having dependency on what's in the front end uh, device or in the application. But it also allows you to do is to think about how you consolidate your number of acquirers and therefore create some economies of scale. And the third, which is quite a significant benefit is that it gives you a single point of transactional data. You have a visibility of all your transaction in one single platform it allows you to settle with your acquirers faster. Instead of waiting for next day to get your money, you can settle multiple times in a day. So it creates a lot more efficiency. 
It creates faster speed to market. It allows you to support all sorts of new payment forms, and it creates a much better customer experience for your consumers in all your market. And lastly, about the sustainability and ethical behavior. Of course, as I mentioned earlier on, the retailers have a very complex ecosystem. Consumers demand that the entire ecosystem needs to be ethical and sustainable. And therefore, retailers need to partner with all their partners who believe in the similar values. And not only believe in similar values, but also practice similar values. We at DBOLD, we, we take it seriously. We commit to our global responsibility being a global organization. In every country, in every market, whatever we do, we make sure that our supply chain and our operations are totally sustainable. We believe in reducing our carbon footprint. We believe in, in, in our uh, health and safety of our environment and our employees. We believe in recycling. And lastly, being a global citizen, we also want to make sure that we continue to encourage diversity and inclusion in our uh, workforce. We don't even just talk about these things. We practice diversity and inclusion uh, in a serious manner. We have a program called CARE, which helps our, our teams, our managers, to bring in talent from very diverse background and make sure that we create a very inclusive environment within our company. So why all of this is relevant now? As I mentioned, yes, some of these trends were already prevailing before pandemic. Why do we need to act now? And I think if we look at any research, but the one I'm sharing here is from the Nielsen uh, group, our consumers are demanding that they need a better experience when they get to the store. Waiting in queue, not able to find the right product quickly, and the whole shopping experience taking too long, are just not on anymore. Consumers do not want that anymore. And, and the research was conducted across all markets or many markets. So it's not that it's specific to one particular market. This is a trend that's happening everywhere. Consumers in every market is demanding a better experience. Therefore, we need to start to think about now, what do we do in order to improve the customer experience? If you look at the self-checkout and self-service alone, 67% of Asian grocery shoppers prefer to go to a self-checkout when their basket size is smaller. And most of them, majority of them would like to pay with a cashless method as well. So we need to start to think about all of these things now. I mean, we need to start to invest in our platform that allows us to be successful in future and allows us to be, to be able to serve our consumers better and allows us to be future thinking and forward looking and not stuck into, the, into the, our legacy of past. Whilst we can learn a lot from our legacy, we also need to sort of stay focused on our future as well. And this is why I believe that the time is right to act now. That brings me to my pretty much the last uh, point. And let me just quickly summarize what we expect in the coming year and beyond. We believe that the consumers will eventually return to store. We as human, we are social creatures and we like interaction. So we would like to go out and still have a bit of a touch and feel, have the experience in the store. So I believe that the store, the physical stores will continue to flourish. At the same time, we will also see a continuous growth in e-commerce. So there will be an overlap between what's e-commerce and what's the physical experience. Our stay home economy will continue to flourish as well. Some of these changes that we've seen as a result of pandemic are permanent changes. I believe that a lot of people will continue to still work from home and therefore continue to shop online and, and, and only go out as and when it's required, either for social reasons or for work, for work reasons. And from a retail perspective, those retailers who innovate fast will benefit in a very profound manner. And again, it brings to the urgency of time. You know, this is the time for us to act faster so we can respond to these changes and we can create an environment that allows us to support uh, the, the consumer journeys of the future. Consumers will continue to fly to the value. They will continue to ask for more value. And therefore we need to continue to think about how do we create more value for our consumers. And as suppliers and vendors, we need to start to think about 
how do we create more value for our retail customers? The importance of purpose will not diminish it at all. It will continue to become more and more profound going forward. People will continue to ask questions about sustainability, about ethics, about the organic nature of product, about health and safety of our product, and all the, uh, the processes that, that sit behind our supply chain. And lastly, technology will continue to disrupt the environment. It, it's, an, it's a nonstop, perpetual process, and we just need to stay plugged into this technology game to continue to evolve and, and innovate. With that, let me just close by simply doing one little plug for our Debo Nixto. We have been in the retail business for over 30 years. We work with some of the largest brands in the world. We, are, we work with the top 25 European retailers and many other global retailers around the world. We serve five key segments and we continue to focus on these five key sort of segments, the general merchandise, the grocery segment, fashion and specialty retailing, fuel and convenience, and quick service restaurants. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening and I'm happy to take questions.